Hello and welcome to 15 Minute Gamer. My name is Tony and this is an impressions video for Burnout Paradise. This is taken from the PlayStation 4, but it's also available on the Xbox One and the Pros and the whatever consoles we have out these days. But it's a 10 year old game, it's £30. Is it worth it? Let's have a look. But before any of that, obviously we need to take a look at the website. So in 2008, the original Burnout Paradise came roaring off the start line, ready to demolish the competition. Featuring breakneck racing, high flying stunts, and most importantly, shameless amount of automotive destruction. If you want to read the rest, why don't you sit and have a little read and pause the video here? Did you enjoy all the reading there? That was a lot of words, wasn't it? Um, so Burnout Paradise is, and I'm not going to put this lightly, one of my favourite ever racing games. It is wonderful. It beats all the forces. It beats everything. It's open world feel and. It just the sense of speed and how awesome it is is just incredible and when i saw it was getting remastered i was like oh my god i need to get this game and then i saw the price 30 pounds and i'm gonna come back to this i'm gonna come back because we're gonna talk about you know the positives and negatives of this game and you know to kind of discuss it a little bit so for those who don't know burnout was a racing series which is now canned Thanks a year. Um, it was made by Criterion Studios, and the game was basically developed to make you go as fast as you could, cause accidents, race, and do all the mad stuff you want to do in an arcade racer. And you know what? This is a proper old school racing game, and I love it. There's nothing hidden behind loot crates, there's nothing hidden away, there's no microtransactions, anything like that. The game comes bundled with all the DLC. There was a lot of DLC. I think there was about six or seven packs, like a day and night pack and all these different car packs. And these came out as the game develops that EA kept bringing these packs out. But you know what? And it might sound weird to some guys out there now. You know how you unlock stuff? You progress. Can you can you imagine can you imagine a game now where you unlock everything in the game, apart from DLC, by playing? Like Oh my god, it's just it's just mind boggling how today none of that happens. Like so much is locked away behind paywalls and, and microtransactions and loot crates that I think a lot of people just don't realise what gaming was like back 10, 15 years ago. When you bought a game, you generally bought a game. And I know there's a lot hidden behind DLC. But even if you didn't have the DLC, there's still, I think, 79 cars to unlock. And these are just unlocked by progression, by winning races, by, like, certain cars appear. And then you've got to, like, knock them and take them down. And then that get to that car and i think that's just fantastic and to just play a game like that again was just very very satisfying there's no currency there's no money you don't pay for repairs you don't pay for part upgrades you can't upgrade the cars you can choose the color and that's about it you get the color change and then you jump in so that's the point of the game the point of the game is well it's an open world so there's very little point um there's just races scattered around, there's takedown races, there's wreck fests, there's point to point races against yourself, there's special events to do, there's cruising things to do, there's billboards to smash, there's gates to go through, there's jumps to find. There's just all sorts of things to find in this game. There are so many collectibles and things to go through and shortcuts to find and billboards and it's just... There's just loads to do, and sometimes you can just be driving around for 20 minutes, not doing a race or anything, just smashing through things, and just finding something to do. And again, I just absolutely love that. The races are fun. The races aren't necessarily um, dictated to where you go. There's no GPS as such. It's basically get to there. There's kind of a cool little feature which kind of acts like a GPS. So can you see at the top of the screen now, there's the street you're on? Well, when you get the turn and you need to be on, you'll see the turn in come close and then it flashes and then you know to go that way. It can be a bit hard to see sometimes when you're racing at all these breakneck speeds um, to see where you're going. Sometimes you can miss it, but usually if you miss a junction, you can just go on the next junction. Like You don't get penalized for going off track. There's no massive big signs dictating what way you go and what, where you go and how you do it. There's none that it's just basic. You're here get to there and race and i really like that as well um the ai is when we talk about racing obviously you're gonna be racing against ai um it's it, it's okay 
Uh, we'll come back to that later on. So at the start of race, they're just around traffic lights. When you get a traffic light, you spin your wheel up. And then that's you into that race or whatever kind of event it is. Once you do that, um, you'll get a mark on your license. So it'll basically say, right, you need to win five more races, ten more races to get to the next license. When you get the next license, you can take part in that race again to then win it again uh, in different class of cars. So, you know, once you've unlocked a race, you're not generally not not come back to it you can try it in a different car different thing you see here and it's really cool when you start racing it's like yeah you're here you need to get to there and then the traffic lights go to red and then to amber and to green like that and then you're off and you got boosts and powers and there's jumps there's an e-brake which is like a handbrake there's just so much there's even different classes of cars so you've got aggression cars you've got stunt cars you've got speed cars and each one of them, there's special events for them. You can only enter certain events with certain cars. You know, if you need speed one, aggression cars will fill up their turbo boost meter by being aggressive. Speed cars can only boost when the, the boost gauge is full. And you know what? It's just such a good game. And as I was saying, there's a lot of cars. You get all the DLC in here. I, I'm just speeding this up when I'm just looking through the cars. But there must be about 150, if not 200 vehicles in this game. Yeah, there's some that are kind of similar you know and the same and so forth but there's so many cool things and the dlc cars are really cool it's like a delorean type one there's hot rods there's police cars there's bikes there's just everything you can see i'm just flashing through them here but there's just so many and have all different stats you can do all the races in them and everything like that so you know what a complete package the only thing i'd say about in this screen and they haven't improved it is that it takes a while to load the car in there's like a really annoying drop and it takes a little bit of time just for that to drop in the car. And I think when you try and look through loads of cars, that should have been speeded up from the original. So, we talk about all that. What's the handling like? The handling is really good. It's really arcadey. The game world's developed to keep you going. Even if you crash into a wall, it will generally reset you pretty quickly in the right way and face in the right direction. Which can be a little bit immersion ruining when you're in a race and you punch someone into a wall takedown because when you take it down it has kind of the same effect you take them down you watch them getting taken down and crashing and then the game will put you back in the right direction if you were heading towards a wall at 100 miles an hour you soon you then won't be heading towards a wall you'll be round the corner which i think is a little bit immersion but it's all designed just to keep you going going forward flying forward and getting around as fast as you can so even if you're rubbish at racing games you necessarily won't be with this one um the ai is okay it's um it's not great in places but remember it's a 10 year old game it does its job it's there to be cannon fodder it will pose a little bit of a challenge it will punt you off the road it will be aggressive and again it just adds to it it's not the best ai it's not going to be up the fours of standards. It's not going to be taking lines and stuff like that. Who cares? They're there to bash around and they're there to bash you as well. The music from all the original is here as well. So you've got Paradise City. You've got all the cool tunes from 10 years ago. They're all back in here. And the music is really good. Along with the sound effects, you can hear that scrape of metal. You can hear that scratching. All the engines sound good. When you hit the turbo, you get that nice boost. So, you know, all that's there from the original game. So... That's all the good things. What's it like as a package now? And is it worth £30? That, dis that depends. If you've got an Xbox One, is upgrading to this going to make a difference? Because on Xbox One, you can backwards compatible and play the original. I'm not overly sure. I've looked at videos to see how this compares to the old version from 10 years ago. And it's brighter. There's a few extra details you know the buildings are more textured the roads are more textured and things like that but the physics model hasn't really been improved in places because when you knock a lamppost down and smash things it looks a little bit rubbish the poly count on the cars hasn't really been increased the damage is still by them like almost triangular sections where it won't crumble in it kind of sections crumble in which are designed to do that um and the cars still look a little bit low res as well. I would like to see a little bit more. But it still, though, compared to the original, does look better. So for me, if you've never played Burnout before, go and get it. It's such a great racing game. If you played it 10 years ago and loved it again, you're not going to be wasting your money. You're going to get hours and hours of enjoyment out of it. If you can get the backwards compatible version, would I say £30 worth it for a couple of tweaks? No, I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure because you still get all you know you can still get all DLC and stuff like that anyway in online race and stuff. So would I pay the thirty pound? I'm not sure. For me, I think it would have been better suited to be around about the twenty thirty pound mark. I know they're giving you all the DLC. I know they've done a bit of a remaster, but it's a ten year old game, and in the game, not much has changed. And if you compared the two side by side, yes, you would see a few graphical tweaks and stuff like that, and you know more texture that sort of thing. But a remastered. It's more for me just a slight improvement of what we had and it's such an awesome, wonderful game. How do you improve perfection? I don't know. They've managed it a little bit, but I don't know. It's just £30 seems a little bit high when there's not that much of an improvement. And just before I go, there's a few little things just to talk about. There is full multiplayer support, so you can play online against your friends. There's also offline times and stuff, so on certain sections of road, a time will kick in. You've got, a, you know, say so-and-so's done the fastest time on this route, and you can try and beat them as well. So there's some good social features there. There's also a few things this game doesn't do, which you might be accustomed to if you play racing games at the moment. There's no fast travel. There's no changing cars on the fly. If you want to go and change your car to take part in the race, you've got to drive to a junkyard and get that car changed. There's also no waypoint markers, so you've got to keep referring to the map to find out where you're going. And there's some of the negative things. I know they were in the original game, but I would have maybe like seen a few of them incorporated if they could have in this. And I think it would have just made it from just a couple of side graphical tweaks to just something just to be the one of the best racing games ever. Um, but that's my verdict on it. If you have any opinions, leave them in the comments below and I'll catch you later. Goodbye.